Well, thank you very much. Uh, I am very, very happy to be back in, in Chennai, where I've been several times, and I always enjoy it. So I, well, really, I'm very, very happy. And then also, I'm ashamed of sort of uneasy speaking after, after Gabriel, who had given an extremely good talk, so I really enjoyed it. So, so then, then let's let's try to go to this uh, to this talk of mine, which will be on phase transitions in swarm elevators, the XY model, and if, and some other things. So, the uh, my collaborators are. Uh, Steve Cogni, uh, all these people here are from Shang, uh, Cameroon. So Steve Cogni, Venceslav Gefoe Meli, I call him just Meli because he's short, Thierry Njongo, Patrick Lowodop, Robert Chinga, and Hila Fotsian. So, so, uh, so then, what are swarm electors? Okay. A swarm is a set of animal. I mean, they could be birds, they could be fish, they could be bees, anything like that, in which we consider the, 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 that they tend to move together. And what we consider is the, the spatial system uh, which would be like uh, the plane, no, like the, like the, I could, would say more better, the, the pilot in a plane. And then the, an internal system, which in this case could be a navigator, that will tell him how to behave. And, uh, and so we consider these two, two systems, and that these two systems belong to the same object, and they, in a way, they interact with each other. And then there are the, this, this corresponds to each of the particles, and, and each of the particles is, is let's say, a verb. And, uh, and then uh, they also interact in other ways. So then uh, there, it has been, a, wait a second, uh, there has been some interest in this kind of system, uh, uh, initially from the point of view of statistics. And, I have seen many papers, like people like uh, Cavagna, Parisi, Chate, and others, and uh, Vukcek, and, uh, and, but they all try to explain the system from the uh, statistical physics point of view. And what we are going to try is another approach, which uh, very few people had, had tried. Uh, there are only essentially two models around. So uh, we are using this model, which is, uh, is uh, corresponds to the authorship is uh, O'Keefe and others, and uh, and in this model, this is the x are the spatial variables, and theta correspond to the internal variables, and then. X correspond to the interactions between, let's say, the objects, and as you can see, it has it has uh, essentially two terms. One is uh, long range, one is long range behavior, and the other is short range behavior. And there is a term like this uh, A plus. Uh, this thing is not well. <laughs> I, can, I mean, as usually cannot make them go. No, but I, but I just move them. Well, there are two terms, essentially. The first one, uh, the first one, which is uh, long range, and is the one that is, has, we have uh, uh, included in it the interaction with internal variables, which, are, which is theta. And for the theta, we use some sort of Kuramoto model with, with, where the, the coupling is, is, uh, depends also on the external, external variables, the special variables. We take VI 
vi is, is a velocity and omega i is a, a, a natural frequency and we take vi and omega i equal to, to constant and in particular we use it zero because it doesn't change anything in the calculation. So, uh, so as we say, we study the fact that internal dynamics has on the spatial distribution or vice versa and uh, one of the things that we are going to see, I don't know if you, yes, you have heard of that because I heard the phrase several times already. So uh, many of the systems seem to present an effect that is called, it's been given the name of explosive synchronization, which is the first order of phase transition. And uh, 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 where, and, and this has been taken essentially as if something that it happens all the time. And one of the things that we're going to show is that this is not necessarily, a, this is not a necessary condition for the systems. Well, so let's go to the systems. This, these systems have a very rich dynamics. That's, that's for, uh, for what, what happened in them. The original authors, found these dynamics here, and eventually you're going to see that we collect a few more. So there are, there are essentially these five states. These are simply, let's say, pictures of these states. But uh, so in the, uh, in the upper part, we have the special variables. In the lower part, we have the internal variable state. In the, the colors in the upper part represent this, the values of the, of the theta variable. So if they are all different, if they are different colors, okay, it means that they are different. And here all we are trying to have is the value of those, of those, uh, of those alphas. The, the, we are considering, uh, you know, I think we are considering 50, 50 elements, or sometimes we've been ca calculating with one hat, but it doesn't matter. Well, the first one, we call it a static asynchronous. The second one, in which already, as you have, can see, they, they, are, they, are, they are essentially moving, so we call an active phase wave. The third one is called the static phase wave. Uh, and the active and the static, you cannot see it in the pictures. You do need to see it as a function of time, but essentially are like that. So the, the C is a, a static phase wave in, in which you have all the theta like this. This one, in this one already, the, they start forming clusters. And the clusters uh, where the, the clusters represent the values of theta. And as you can see below, ah, it's working. As you can see here, they also form a cluster here. And that one is the complete synchronization. This one is called a splinter phase wave. So, so then let's see the, the way that we analyze it to start with is, is the usual way. We look at the order parameter of the variable theta, as you can see it here. And uh, then we look at the we look at the S, we, we look at S, which is the correlation between the external angle, the, spa, the, the angle of the spatial variable, and the and the internal angle. And as you can see, when the as you can see when the when the synchronization is low, the correlation is very high. But and and they, and they change positions when when there is a synchronization, there is no correlation. So here is we have changed the the one of the parameters to see, and this is the error. But it, it doesn't matter because it, it will take too long a time if I stop. Right. So then, what did we look at? So, oh, sorry. What is doing there? In which so no, I've been going the other way. Okay, so the, near the synchronization, xi 
I mean, near synchronization, the Xi and Xj essentially remain in the same place. So the distance Xi minus Xj is practically constant. And, and we can say that then in the, the uh, for the variable theta, the, the coupling co constant is indeed a constant. And, and then we have a normal Kuramoto model. And, and if we have that normal Kuramoto model, then we can write the Hamiltonian for this system. We can, we can write it as, as we have here. And where the, the, the equation for theta i is essentially the Langevin equation of this Hamiltonian. So uh, when the system gets synchronous, the h is like this. And then you can say that then it seems as if this synchronization, the, 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 the Hamiltonian is essentially falling like this. And you can say that this is essentially a way that synchronization is used to lower the energy of the system. That's why it goes into synchronization. So, and this here, here happens this thing that, that has been called explosive synchronization. And that we had in the, in the other, that we had here, this, this, this transition here. And that's what the first thing we're going to talk about. So this explosive synchronization. Uh, why this thing comes on the, here. No, no, I know it's because I put the, my hand on top. <laughs> that's the that's reason. So, so, do we have explosive synchronization or we don't? So, when I saw for the first time that we had this uh, XY model, uh, and because essentially, essentially that, that uh, Hamiltonian is one dimension. So, so then being, having, having been around for some time, I remember one of the things that people will report all the time was that there was no phase transition in one dimensional systems. So then I said then I said to myself, I mean is there a transition or is not? I mean is this explosive synchronization invented and is not really a first of the phase transition. So then we started looking at at the at the problem and what was the literature around? Well <laughs> The, the way I'm going to say it is not the order we found, but we found this. So, uh, the, one of the things we found was a paper written, written in 2004 by Cuesta and Angel Sanchez, who, who essentially lift, let's put it like this, lifted the ban imposed by the theorem of Van Hove that there was no phase transition in one dimensional systems. So the, we were worried because the, the theorem of Van Hove puts as a condition for this type of systems the fact that they have to have a hardcore potential. And if you look at what we had, that it was 1 over xi minus xj, and the xi minus xj in the synchronized, synchronized state is a constant, then we do have, a, and it's a constant, and it's different from zero because, because in space they cannot occupy the same space. So, so then we do have a hardcore potential. So we, we were worried because of that. But let's say that these people lifted, lifted that condition for us and we could go on happily. So then what had happened as to this type of of uh, transition. Oh, one of the first papers belongs to Diego Passo uh, about the Kuramoto, that the Kuramoto model has a first order transition from incoherence to synchronization. All the elements synchronize at this, for the same coupling constant, and it does in the thermodynamic limit. But the natural frequencies of the Kuramoto model have to have be evenly spaced. So that's the only case in which Pazzo is telling us that 
that they have a first order first transition. Then came a very well-known paper by Gomez Gardenas and collaborators in which they say that there is an explosive transition in a scale free network when the when the in the, the internal frequencies uh, and and the links in the network are essentially uh, have the same value. Okay, so that's what they say. Then uh, came a paper by Scardal Arenas. I think there is another author, but I can't remember. Uh, and they observed that if to the case of Gomez Gardenas you add some little noise, then the explosive synchronization gets better, dis better defined. I mean, so <laughs> then there is another paper by Leiva et al. There are two. One is by Leiva et al., which is a paper and uh, another author. And then there is another one, which is a review, whose first is the same people, but the first author in that one is Boccaletti. And, uh, and essentially, they discuss many of these cases, and they say that it is, it's explosive signalization. But when you go and look at all the cases that they have treated, re what happened is they have treated the case where the, the internal frequencies, uh, the natural frequencies of the Kuramoto model uh, cannot be equal between themselves. And they cannot be equal to the mean either. So it's a very special case. I mean, I'm worried about the Gomez Gardenas because the Gomez Gardenas being the frequency have to be equal to the or to the to the to the degree of the node, uh, then I mean it will be hard to see that when the system is very large, you wouldn't have equal frequencies. But I don't. I mean that's that's what the I report is just what they have done. And then there's another paper by Hong and Martins, which he studied the transitions in, in essentially in a variant of the Kuramoto model in which the Kuramoto ha, has a, a, a coupling parameter which is uh, stochastic and another that is not. Uh, uh, and they say that when they, there is no noise, they find, they find some features of a first order phase transition, but when, when it's, there's, there's noisy, it should be continuous, that is second or the phase transition. Our case, having the, the coupling constant, that, that uh, term 1 over xi minus xj, I mean, at the synchronization, this is a constant. But before the synchronization, essentially, is a noisy parameter, because this is a, the xi and xj are essentially all different. So, so we expect to have something noise. So here are the references of these people. So uh, then we decided to look at what is really happening. Uh, and uh, in our case, uh, we looked at three cases, essentially. We took the distribution of natural frequencies, and we look at the random case in which we found, the, as you can see, the the order parameter of Kuramoto that we have here. Uh, this blue one is, it, it's, I mean, it goes to one, but it's, it cer certainly is not the first order of phase transition. And the transition, when you look at the energy, is as you, as you see here. Then, then, uh, then the next case, we look at a case in which we have a group in which the natural frequencies are constant, and a second group in which we add a small parameter. So essentially, we have two groups. And we see that although it looks more like, like explosive, I wouldn't say that that is explosive. But <laughs> so if the best would be an effective explosive. And so when the third group, uh, we have constant, 
We have constants, we have another one slightly different, and we have a third group, which is, which is random. And in this one, we see clearly that, that the transition, uh, well, no, it's not going to work. At the transition, the, the system starts by, by having clusters, and then eventually, after a while, they go, they go to synchronization. So, let me see what I have here. So, uh, essentially then, we tend to say that the first order, the explosive synchronization does exist, but it's not absolutely, uh, I mean, it's not that all systems like a Kuramoto-like are really do have a first order the transition depending on, and it all depends on the values of the, of the uh, natural frequencies of the system. So then, before getting into other the singularities of this case, we decided to look at what happens to a more complicated system. And what we decided to look was just to look at a system with two layers, I mean, two layers of these formal layers, and when they interact between themselves. So, then the equations are practically, let's say practically, but not equally, <laughs> the same. So, the equation for the spatial parameters are the same, is, is, is x dot i, but the, the equation for the, for the internal uh, for the internal variable theta changes because we have the original one and we have we are adding the terms in which we have so we have the original we have a term for attraction and repulsion between particles in different layers essentially the form of them are like this are like this and we have another one equivalent for the repulsive case so so then, let's show you how and when they interact. We consider these two layers, and we say that they interact between layers whenever the particles are within a certain range. And what we say is, if we consider we have a particle at this dot, at this dot, this is not working. Uh, yeah. At this dot, green dot here, we say that this particle will interact with the particles in the other layer. If I just have been a perpendicular from this point to the next layer, and from this point in the next layer, we consider a range that they call, we call the vision range for historical reasons, but we call it the vision range, and it was the, the objects that are within that vision range that we interact with the one in, in the point, in the green point here. And the, is the, thing, the same thing is valid for, for, the, for the objects in the next layer. So, then, oh, then, I mean, if you just want to see what these things, there are essentially two main things, two main states uh, one of them is when the, when they start when they start moving essentially the essentially the particles in both layers they may be in a state like the ones we had before the so-called splitter states because we have different clusters but essentially they they have the same state into into in both of them and another one that is was uh, it, we found here is something that is called a pi state, interlayer pi state. I think the pi state was found before, but we found it, it was important in the interlayer case. And in the interlayer case, what happens is the, the, the layers, the particles in one layer separate into clusters that are separated by pi, and in the next layer, uh, but but uh, in, in both layers happy the same thing. And, and this is what we call the pi state. But then, if we look at the Hamilton, what happened? 
If we look at the Hamiltonian and, and the, 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 the parameter that we have been changing here, the Hamiltonian is a function of, of the parameter that governs the attractive interaction. And, uh, and RC is a vision range. So we see that for the vision, for large vision range, essentially this the transition is like we've been talking about explosive. But for smaller values of the vision range, then we found that this this energy first goes down before going into the, into the synchronization. So we were worried. I mean, what is going on? Why is this? Are these these uh, elements here making the, uh, diminishing the, the energy. So then we started analyzing what could happen with them. And by analyzing different things, what we found is that here, at, in this region here, the, the, the thetas, that is the, the the internal variables, from the internal variables, they move, essentially almost synchronized, but they move in a, in, a, in a rotational wave, okay? So there is a rotational wave in this state and quite well ordered, as a matter of fact. So then we also look at this other place, why is here? Because if you look in detail, here really, as you can see, there are some reds here and some greens everywhere. So there is, it takes a while to really go to the complete synchronous state. There are, there are some fluctuations. Then we we'll decide to look what happened there. And the thing that happened there is it's, we obtain again, we obtain again, uh, we, <laughs> we put the, this twice, I don't know why. But uh, the, the thing that happens here is there is also a, a rotational wave. But while this one moves uh, anti-clockwise, this one, this rotational wave here in the transition to synchronization moves in, the, in, the, in this direction. So, Moves in the clock, moves clockwise, and uh, and it it is it is rather let's say noisy. It has a lot of fluctuations. Uh, while uh, then, just much near synchronization, it gets more orders. Uh, so then, what we have, and what I'm going to show you now, is what happened in those cases. I think that what happened in those cases here. It's, it's hard <laughs> I had to see because they are very slow. So it seems as if they are not moving. Why? Why are they moving? So because I don't see any. Oh no! I mean, it, it, it should. Uh, well, the next one is no. No, this one, I don't know why the video is not working. But this one, yeah, it's working. The point is, it's working. You see, look up there, uh, uh, the, the time, and, and they are working. The point is that is, they are very, very slow. These are the ones in the, uh, these are the ones for the sigma, the small sigma that is when the energy goes down. And uh, so essentially they are ordered, but, and with the rotational wave. If I move to the next, the next one is at that point where they reach synchronization. And as you see here, there is one case that I was telling you that there, is a, there are a lot of fluctuations, and they move pretty quick, pretty quickly, yes. And, and in here, they have ordered themselves. Okay, so the, now going back to the to the one layer case, uh, remember that I stop uh, and then I say, okay, now that we have seen these things, let go, let's go back to the other one and see what is going on right before the, 
the synchronization. That, that was the point of the discussion of if it was explosive or not. And the thing that we found is that before the synchronization, there, is, there appears also these this rotational waves. As you can see, as you can see here, they are first a bit uh, disordered, and the, the, the particles are essentially grouped in clusters. Then it appears a strange thing that we have given another name. We had given a, a static wave, uh, no, splintered wing, splinter wing uh, state, the name of splinter wing state, and, and the they start to organize themselves and all of them following the rotation. And then, at synchronization, this is what called my attention, and we need still to, do, to look at something. The, in space, they are synchronized, but here, there are two clusters. And this is already what continues after the Colsim thing is completely synchronized. And the next one, I, I have the same, same thing. Uh, in which I'm showing you each of these elements I, in here. As you can see here, here they are oscillating in any direction, and there they are really oscillating in only one direction, and this is what we call a, a, what we call a static wing. So, then the, I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to... to uh, then I'll, it will, I will have to ask for another two minutes. Uh, essentially, uh, I have shown you a bit of what we have found in the systems of swarmalators, uh, which present a lot of different phases. And analyzing the, the, energy, uh, the energy at the transition to complete synchronization, we see that it can be represented by an XY model, which at first time present First side presents the first order phase transition, but the first the transition really can be of the first order or second order, depending on the energies or, or the natural frequencies in the essentially the Kuramoto-like model. Uh, then we extend it to multi-layer systems, and we notice that the dynamics uh, becomes more complicated, and it, it really has a lot of uh, every. Essentially, what happens is that every time you look at details, you find something new. Uh, the, the point is this. At the beginning, I promise you, I promise, no, I don't promise. I said that I was going to, we, we are trying to explain the, more, the movement of this huge amount of, of, uh, of animals, could be flocks or of starlings, could be swarms of fish, of anything like that. And all I had shown you is essentially a lot of, <laughs> a lot of states and how these, these states are. So can we, I mean, can we have something? Uh, 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 the point is uh, part of this work is going to appear in, in, in this E, but what I'm going to show you now is it has we have not written the paper yet, but, but well, we are doing more cal calculations. What I'm going to show you now is something that I think that uh, these systems can really be used to represent the movement of true, of true animals. And in this, one, in this case, I call it the mother duck effect, OK? Why the mother duck? Because what I'm going to, I'm going to sort of explain because the, the video goes fast and then it goes very slow and then it goes fast again. The thing is, I have a system. I have a system that is supposed to be there, the mother duck with the ducklings and they get all together and one of the ducklings escape. Okay? Escapes from the, from, from the community, let's say. And it goes away. So, and you see the others, the, the rest sort of uh, oscillating here and there, but the other duckling tries to come back, then goes away again, and then it takes uh, probably more, more than a minute or something like that until it eventually comes out. 
And when it comes down, I want you to pay attention because you will see you will see the effect, and I will come back to that after the video passes. So, uh, so, so all these are essentially my ducks with the mother, which are they are not synchronized at this moment, and uh, so a little bit of patience. Because these things take a long time to do, is what they are here. So, so you see, this there is a whole community that gets together, and that one there is escaping, for, let's say, from the family. So, and it, I mean, you can think that it's been called by the others, but it refuses to come back. So it stays, it stays there. It sort of. It comes back, it goes away, and then it comes back, and it goes away, but eventually, eventually will come. So, so, but then what you see is that the community expands, like, like calling it, let's say, you, or, or see if it will come back, and so soon will come back. Now they're expanding, let's say, to receive it. And what I want to see you to see is what happens when it comes back. Because when it comes back, it's going to be fast again. So you see, it comes back, and it, let's say, tries to convince all the brother ducklings that we should make a revolution here. So, but. It, but eventually, the whole system uh, synchronizes again. Well, I thank you very much. Questions? Why is it circular? Why circular? Why, why is it circular, the entire? Oh, well, uh, I mean, that was our uh, selection to represent the data. I mean, we could have simply made a square. We put the boundary conditions and we made the square. That's how we, how we look a system like that. And, uh, and since uh, the point is uh, the angle was necessary to look at the correlation between the between the special and the, and, the, and the internal variable, so we decided to plot it like that. But I mean, it, there is no special reason to make it, to, to have it. Yeah. So you didn't compare with XY model? Sorry? You didn't compare with XY model, that XY model has a range of the critical exponents and all that? If it has a critical exponent, no, we haven't done that. You haven't? No, no, no. I mean, no, it's, uh, the, this, this, these systems have a lot of details. I mean, so there are lots of things that can be done with them, still. <laughs> See? I mean, as you have seen, we have not, we, uh, something that is necessary if you're going to look at these kind of things as representing, for instance, birds. If you want to look at these things called, called the murmurs of, of the birds when they really fly and make beautiful, beautiful figures, uh, you cannot rest the system to square. You have to allow them to go. So, so this thing of having the velocities and the frequencies constant is, is a no-no. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Hilda. Very nice talk. Um, going back to the swermulators. Yeah. Uh, so you showed in your models that you can get very sophisticated behaviors and describe them very well, and especially the last one, but all the other ones. So my question is: Is this observed in real animals? Because I know, for example, they've been recording, for example, starlings and getting their positions, so yeah. now there are some biological... Yeah, the point is, this is what everybody's been trying to do, is precisely to, for, for instance, let's look, is there a fish? They do see fishes sometimes forming and going, and going like that. So, I mean, for that, you can, you can easily explain it with it. With the birds, I mean, there have been 
quite a number of years already when they started putting these pictures on the on, on paper, let's say, and uh, nobody has explained them. I mean, people, for instance, like Cabana had been able to explain things like, like the turning around, but only the turning around, not all the movement of the main. It hasn't explained the whole things. So, so don't, then we, I mean, if you, no, you, because you went out, but today in the talk that Patrick gave, which is one of the collaborators, he talked about the a system, a, which is master slave, in which when the, when the, the slave, let's put it this way, sees, a, sees something that you perturb the system, then they move in such a way that the slave and the master exchange positions. So the slave becomes the master. So we think, we think, we are looking at those things now, that choosing a, choosing a system like that for the dynamics may give more interest in behaviors. Mostly when, for instance, look at birds, and then suddenly appears a big bird that is, that is dangerous for them. So maybe, I, I don't know. Because as, uh, as I tell you, you saw, you saw with this video, I mean, that we had to wait because all these calculations take a lot of time to do. So, so but uh, I mean, but it's like that. It's, it's, it's a lot, there's a lot of fun. And you know, I want to tell you something very interesting. We have got in touch with, uh, with an artist who is a photographer of this uh, murmurs and this sort of thing. And he makes beautiful pictures in which he combines them to really look at the trajectory of the birds when they fly together, you see. And we are in touch with him. He's very enthusiastic. <laughs> so but we go in touch with him to be able to see if, if he can photograph what we find. And the, the, the the video of the of the of the ducks, uh, the video of the, that I call the we called it the mother duck. The uh, I call it the mother duck at the moment because I had seen in the internet in these many videos that appear exactly what we are seeing there, it, and they were they were it was. A, a duck with ducklings. They are doing exactly that. So, but then I couldn't find the, <laughs> I couldn't find the video again. I've been looking for it, and I have not found it. But I remember to have seen exactly that with with ducks. See, so. Thank you. A very short question. Yeah. Is it possible to model uh, human crowd movement? Uh, human crowd movement, like for example, writing. Like what happened in Paris recently? No, no, I, humans doing what? Crowd, movement of crowds. Groups of people moving together. Groups like in, of people? Like in writing. Yeah. In what happened I in Paris? I don't know. Uh, probably we could. Probably we could. But you know that women uh, don't just move by, by interaction between themselves in that. No, in, 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 in rioting, people move together as a yeah, crowd. You as have to take other, yeah, I mean, they, 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 uh, one has to think what would be a good model for okay. that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Keep uh, them long. Let's give Hilda a big hand. Thank you very much. So let's come to the last talk of the session. Uh, this is by come Professor back. Kelly LaRoche. Uh, the title is uh, Brain, the Most Complicated Complex System. Yeah. Will it be online? Online. Should I put it on the floor? Yeah. Here? Who speaks now? Who's the next? Uh, hello? Can you hear hello? me? Yeah. Oh, okay. And the slides need to go up. Thank you. Very nice time. Okay. Slides? Okay.
Yeah. Okay, please uh, share your slides. Yes, I would like just uh, one moment before. Oh. Recording in progress. Okay. Uh, yes. Let me sh put the, the presentation here. Could you see my presentation? Yeah, we can. Please go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today, I would like uh, congratulations. I give it a congratulations for the the organizers because this hybrid uh, event for me it's so good uh, stay here with you and uh, uh, the, I know the the hybrid events is not so easy to organize and uh, for this and uh, I give a congratulations for the organizers um, I think in, in in Chennai in India is afternoon in Brazil I am in Brazil now and uh, here is around uh, nine o'clock uh, uh, PM, AM, AM, uh, and then uh, around 10 degrees here, and then it's so cold time. And uh, I am here with the, my subject of the presentation. I don't know if you try, uh, you can put to see, but uh, in my mouth, say the brain. This is a model, the, the plastic model of the brain. But I would like to show you the possibility to try and to separate the parts. In my talk today, I explain about this and I explain about more a little bit about the our things and the the subjects, uh, the most complicated complicated 